Hello, hi student. This is Dr. Cam Perez, and today we'll be talking about anatomy and physiology and also assessment and overview of the breast. So let's get into it. So the breasts are located between the second and the sixth ribs over the pectoralis muscle from the sternum to the mid axillary line. So an area of the breast called the tail of spence, and here it is. This is called the tail of spence. It extends into the axilla. So the fissile band called the copper ligament support the breast on the chest wall. And here we go. Here's a chest wall. So here are the ribs. These are the ribs. This is actually the intercostal space. Here is the pectoralis major. This is the muscle, and this up here is the clavicle bone. So let's look at the structure of the breast. Here we have the nipple pores, and these are actually called what we call the suspensory ligament copper. This right here is called the suspensory ligament copper. And this is what we said that supports the breast on the chest wall. Then we have here, this is called the inframe mammary fold. Now, it is a ridge of fat at the bottom of the breast. Keep in mind that each breast contains 12 to 20 cone-shaped lobes, all right? They contain 12 to 20 cone-shaped lobes, which are made up of granular elements which are called lobes and ducts all right so this is lobe and then you have the duct here is the milk duct all right this may look like the branches and then the lobes are, are considered or may look like the leaves so milk is produced in the lobes and then carried through the duct to the nipple so then you have the milk produced in the lobes, which is here. The milks are produced here. Then they're carried through the ducts to the nipple. All right. So let's look at what we call the Tanner stage. And this is very important for students to understand. So stage one, and we're talking about Tanner stage, is described as pre-puberty. So if you look here, Tanner stage one, pre-puberty, only the papilla is elevated, meaning that there is no elevation of the chest wall. The only thing you'll be able to see is a nipple. In stage two, that's where budding first begins, is the first sign of puberty. And as you can see here, you will see that there's an elevation, a slight elevation of the chest wall that's what we call budding. This is an enlargement and widening of the areola and a mound-like elevation of the breast. In stage three, which is called Tanner stage three, it involves further enlargement of the breast tissue and the areola, a darker tissue ring around the nipple. So again, this is further enlargement. In stage four, this occurs when the nipple and the areola form a secondary mount on the top of the breast tissue. So let's take a closer look at this. You can see that the nipple is not elevated off the mount, right? But look at stage four. You can see where the nipple now is elevated. So you have the breast tissue that create that mount. And then in stage four, you have that second elevation are mount on the breast tissue. In stage five, it is continued development of a larger breast with a single contour, all right? Now, one of the common questions that you will see that they'll ask is between stage two and four. So you need to know, stage one is obvious. There's no sign of puberty. Stage five is obvious. This is projected, you know, adult size looking more contour breasts but is when you get into stage two differentiating stage two from stage three from stage four 
So remember that stage two is the budding, right? Stage three, it further enlarge. And there is no separation and there's no contour. On stage four now, this is where you have the nipple and the areola form a second mound on top of the breast tissue, okay? So male and female breasts mature comparable until they reach about puberty when you have estrogen and other hormones initiating breast development in females. So this kind of development occurs from age 10 to 16 years old, although the range can vary from about age 9 to 18. So make sure that you understand the tenor stages from 1 through 5. So physical assessment for the female breast. So annual clinical examination for women 40 years and older. So once they have, and we're talking about clinical breast ex clinical breast examination for women, is this is when they're going to the clinic and their breast has been examined by the practitioner or the clinician. They continue to recommend clinical breast examination every one to three years for women between age 20 to 39. And a thorough breast examination include instructions in BSC, which is breast self-examination. It takes about 10 minutes. So as the nurse, it's your responsibility to teach the patient how to do breast self-examination with the acronym is BSE. Now, as it relates to assessment, as you know, the first one is inspection. Examination begins with inspection. So the patient is asked to disrobe to the waist and to sit in a comfortable position facing the examiner. The breasts are inspected for size and symmetry. A slight variation in the size of each breast is common and is generally normal. The skin is then inspected for color. If there's any vein pattern, if there's any thickening, any kind of edema. When we talk about redness, redness may indicate a benign local inflammatory or even a superficial lymph nodes invasion by neoplasma. So abnormal finding during the inspection of the breast. You can see a dimpling of the breast, a flattening of the nipple. This is a retraction sign. And here, this is a retraction with compression. So when we talk about um, signals or signs include skin dimpling or creasing or change in contour of the breast or nipples that's what you're looking for they may be secondary to contraction of fibrotic tissue that can cause underlying malignancy or they may be secondary to scarring tissue formation after breast surgery so retraction signs may appear only with position changes that can also be seen then other sign increase venous prominence so unilateral localized increase in venous pattern associated with malignant tumor so normal with bilateral and symmetric size enlargement associated with pregnancy and lactation so again you may see veins in the breast if they are bilateral meaning that they're in both breasts if it is symmetrically and enlarged and if a person is pregnant or lactating that's normal but if you should see it unilaterally in one size, it's localized and increased venous pattern, this is associated with malignant tumor. Could do orange. So this is associated with inflammatory breast cancer and is caused by interference with the lymphatic drainage. The breast skin has this orange peel appearance. The skin pores are enlarged and it may be noted around the areola and the skin becomes thick and hard and even immobile. Nipple eversion. So consider normal if long-standing, if this person has had it all their lives, as I mentioned. And this can be associated too with fibrous and malignancy if it is recently developed. Piaget disease, this is actually a malignancy of the mam mammary ducts. So early signs, they may have erythema of the nipple or the areola. Late signs, they have thickening, scaling, and even erosion of the nipple. 
So to elicit skin dimpling or even retraction, all right, both hands should be raised over the head to notice any kind of variation. As you can see in this picture, to assess the breast, they will go in a clockwise circular manner. Then they will go from nipple upwards around the breast, all right? Then they will do a up and down and up and down to make sure that they don't miss anything. So the breast is normally palpated with the patient sitting upright and laying down supine. So in the supine position, the patient's shoulder is first elevated with a small pillow to help balance the breast on the chest wall. So failure to do this will allow the breast tissue to slip laterally. It's like when you lay down on your back, your breasts go to one side. So it is best if they are elevated on a small pillow. So the entire surface of the breast and the axilla, the axillary tail is systematically palpated using the flat part pad of the second, third, and fourth finger held together, making like a dime-sized circle. The examiner may choose to proceed with a clockwise direction, followed by an imaginary concentric circle from the outer limit of the breast towards the nipple, as noted in this um, picture. Other acceptable method or the palpating from each number on the face of the clock towards the nipple in a clockwise fashion or in a long imaginary vertical line like noted here. Palpation of the axilla, axillary and the clavicle area is easily performed when the patient is seated as noted in this diagram. So to examine the axillary lymph nodes, the examiner gently abducts the patient's arm from the thorax. So with the left hand, the patient's right arm is grasped and supported. So the right hand is then free to palpate the axilla. So any lymph nodes that may be lying against the thorax wall are noted. So normally these lymph nodes are not palpable. But if they are enlarged, their location, size, and mobility and consistency are and should be noted. So during, palp during palpation, the examiner knows any patient reported tenderness or mass. So if a mass is detected, it is described by its location. For example, in the right breast, right? It will be noted right breast, two centimeter from the nipple, at two o'clock so two o'clock will be right here okay size shape consistency border delineation and even mobility are included in the description so the examiner should repeat the same step to palpate the axillary node in the next arm so when you're doing self breast examination so the first step stand in front of the mirror you as a nurse should educate the patient to stand in front of the mirror check both breasts for anything unusual look for discharge from the nipple puckering dimpling or any scaling of the skin in step two and three they are done to check for any changes in the contour of the breast they may feel tightening of the muscle if there's any form of changing in contour so you should educate the patient to watch closely in the mirror as they clasp their hand behind their head and press their hands forward. And they should look for any change in contour of the breast. The next step is to press their hand firmly on their hip and bow slightly towards the mirror as if they are pulling their shoulder and elbow forward. And they should look for any change in contour. Then the final step, so some women may lay down for this examination, other women may do it in the shower. The finger will gently slide easily if the skin is soapy, so they can concentrate on feeling any kind of changes in the breast. So they should raise their left arm, use the three or four fingers of their right hand to feel their left breast firmly and carefully and thoroughly. 
So they should begin at the outer edge and press the flat part of their forefingers in a circular, moving the circle slowly around the breast and most likely in a clockwise position. So gradually they should work towards the nipple. Make sure to cover all the whole area of the breast. You should instruct the patient to pay special attention to the area between the breast and the underarm, including the underarm itself. And that area is called the tail of Spence. So it's usually right here, tail of Spence. Do not let that part out. So if they are, if they have any kind of spontaneous discharge during the month, whether or not it is during their breast self-examination, they should see their primary care provider. And this examination should be repeated to the right breast. All right. A couple of things when you're instructing the patient to do a self-breast examination, that it shouldn't be done too close when the, the onset of period or too close onset after period because hormones make the breast much firmer, painful, tender, you know, and a little bit firmer than the norm. So it should not be done around that time. All right. So let's look at some diagnostic tests. So they can do a mammogram. And according to the U.S. Preventative Service Task Force, healthy women should have mammogram done every two years beginning at age 50. According to the ACS, which is the American Cancer Society, women 40 years and older should have a mammogram every year. There's another type of test that is called the galactography. This involves injection of at least one ml of radioplat material through the cannula inserted into the ductal opening on the areola, which is followed by a mammogram. So it is performed to evaluate any kind of abnormalities within the duct when the patient has bloody nipple drainage or discharge on expression or spontaneous nipple discharge or a solitary dilated duct noted on the mammogram. Ultrasound. So this is used as a diagnostic adjunction to mammogram to help distinguish fluid filters from other kinds of lesions. So let's keep in mind that a mammogram will be done first before the ultrasound. Then they have MRIs. This is a highly sensitive test that has become useful diagnostic adjunct to mammography. Now, what is your nursing intervention? Make sure to educate the woman on doing self-breast examination. Educate the patient about the procedure they're going to ask. You know, is the mammogram painful? And by the machine squeezing down on the breast, they may have some discomfort, but not necessarily pain. Ultrasound and the MRI are not painful, all right? So make sure to educate your patients. Now, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please do not give, be afraid to give us a call or comment in the box below. Thank you.